Hello, everybody. Flamin' Shark, finally mm. back with some Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. Episode 8, I believe. Um, last time, we had a lot of fun times, and we, uh, we did this uh, thing where we got to see mm. some sussy shit at the beginning of Chapter 3 involving our girl Kotoko, and I'm really concerned that this episode is going to get a lot worse if we dive further into Kotoko's shit. So, I'm going to try and finish chapter 3 in this video. It might be a really long video, and it's unfortunate because I haven't filmed Ultra Despair Girls in forever. I actually went back and I was I was watching through some of it, especially the last video, just to make sure everything was kind of mm. in my head. But it was hard for me to forget Kotoko and her shit. It was also hard to forget Monica being an absolute psychopath, so... Because of that, it was all pretty well burned into my head, but I did want to make try to make this video the rest of Chapter 3, because if we get more Kotoko stuff, it's probably going to be even more fucked up. And what's going to happen is I kind of want to just have one video that you guys can skip through if you don't want to get into Kotoko's shit, um, because it's going to probably be really wild. You know, I don't personally care, but I think a lot of people don't want anything to do with that shit, so that's really the general vibe, and here's a kid. This is gonna be a puzzle. <laughs> labyrinth of Monoku Man. Will you be able to get through the Labyrinth of Monoku Man? If you beat it, you win a very nice reward. Monoku Man's Labyrinth? Monoku Man? But you literally call him Monokuma. So it's Monokuman. What the fuck? Why in the world did my girl voice that as Monoku? Because she didn't say Monoku. Well, she always says Mono, not Mono. I mean, at least be consistent, girl. Alright, let's see what we got. So we have break and move. So we hit the... It looks like the, the kids have stats, like HP and MP. I'm, I'll be curious to look at all this. Um, so we have to get Bomb Guy in in between all the the monokuma the riot monokumas we don't have like a dance I, I i'm trying to remember what these two things do but it obviously is related to these to the two uh things so i'll have to hit hit them with move and see what that does fuck this up? What if I hit it with move again? Will that, like, turn it off? No? I mean, clearly I fucked this up already. Hmm. That's just kind of funny. I obviously fucked it up, but it's okay. Wait, what? They still don't even notice. What the hell? Yeah, I didn't get the special prize because I'm just a fucking idiot. Um, I guess I was supposed to press this one first. I don't even know. Anyways, uh, we got Nagisa. 10 HP, 50 MP. Yeah, that makes sense that he'd be high in magic. I think that's what MP is. 
Uh, 20 HP, 6 MP. That's... Is that just... Yeah, that's supposed to be Jotaro. Interesting that it has Jotaro, like... Pretty face Jotaro. Yeah, that would make sense, I guess. 20 and 6 for... Our, our, our hero, Masaru. Okay, they have the same stats. 17 and 8 for uh, Kotoko. She has like a scythe. That's pretty cool. Interesting. 11 and 48 for Monica. That makes sense. She has the lowest HP. She have... Interesting. Well, no. Okay, so she has one more HP and two less MP than... Nagisa, which I guess, I guess in some ways that's symbolic in the sense that like they're the smart ones, and then these are like the the other ones, you know. But it's weird, right? Because it's like the priest, the so you have the sage, the priest, the hero, the fighter, and then the mage. I guess the sage and the mage having similar stats makes sense, though. I'm not gonna lie, though, um, because I think this is a, um, this is a reference to, um, oh my god, which game is it? It's a famous game. Series, actually, I believe. But I'm trying to remember. Hmm. Huh. The game again? Hmm. Interesting, there's another one. It looks like there's more, um, cutouts. I'm actually really curious to see these. Okay, let's see if I, I can not be a dumbass and get this one. I'm so bad at these. Okay, okay, this one's... Okay, so I have to... I have to... I have to hit move with... On the thing that's gonna make the uh, Siren Monokuma move there. Dance the Siren Monokuma move the car. That one's pretty easy. Um... There we go. Sometimes I'm just an idiot. Sometimes it's actually easy. So we got we got uh, Kotoko killing like a little slime monster. Same with um, Masaru. They're saying something, but it's in Japanese, so I don't know what they're saying. Unfortunately, that's not translated. Same with uh, Monica doing her mage thing. And then you got the, the sage and the priest over here. Then you got that. It looks like there's another room there. I don't really want to look at that until we get over there. Am I missing something? Is there no other... Oh yeah, we came in through there, so we go over there. I'm assuming... I, I, I saw that there was a picture with all of them, but I'm assuming we're going to get to see that later. Is it still going? Yeah, it's probably going to be this next room. Oh, already. someone actually... Someone died, rough. My beloved son... I sent my son off to school this morning, and he came home this afternoon wearing some kind of helmet I couldn't figure out. Okay, the Monokuma helmet. I thought it was some kind of joke. When I asked him about it, a Monokuma showed up out of nowhere and attacked me. I dodged the attack by a hair, picked up my son, and brought him here to hide. On the way, I discovered several things. It's not just my son. The children throughout the town are all wearing them, and they're killing the adults with Monokumas. It's as if my son changed into a completely different person. He just gives me a creepy laugh. I'm not even sure he recognizes me. I can tell he's playing to kill me. I remember the time I struck my son. Just once. But I love my son. I'm sure my son knows it. There's no way he would kill his own mother. That's really interesting. I think that does show that, like, her mind goes straight to that. Like, because she's trying to figure out, like, why would my son end up like this? Even though, obviously, there is some degree of a... I don't know if it's full-blown brainwashing, but given given some of the shit that we saw in DR0, I wouldn't rule out full-blown brainwashing with these helmets. That's honestly probably the most likely guess, which is kind of why I'm not 
entirely sold that's what's happening, but that's probably what's going on. Wild. Okay. What do we got this time? I love how she's not even saying anything. Okay, so there's a pit. There's an endless black hole. So what? We have to... Why do those Motokubas have mustaches? What the fuck? I don't think we've seen that Motokuba before. Oh, all four of them do. I'm actually... I feel like I'm missing something. We're obviously... Oh, I know what it is. Oh, I have to kill the middle Monokuma. The middle Monokuma will blow, will, will like blow up, hit the other two, then the other two will blow up. And yeah, the other two will, will fly into the other four, the, the mustache Monokumas. Yeah, okay. Wow, that one's actually so simple, it kind of caught me off guard a little. Yep, yep, exactly. You can see it right there, yep, yep. Okay, that was cute. We have more drawlings, which I'll focus on in a second. But I just want to get my uh, bronze coins over here, and then we'll uh, take a look at these drawlings from the beginning. Try not to look. Okay. So we got the whole squad, we got all five of them, and they killed a beast of some kind. You know, demon hunting, right? Um, Halo. So it went to, then they're facing, a, you got Masaru, the hero versus the dragon. More text box in Japanese. Now they're all at the kingdom. You got Nagisa blushing while holding Monica's hand. So you have more like con so so like I'm so curious who made this because like it's someone who's aware of the fact that Ma Nagisa's in love with Monica. So like I guess Monica's the most I, I get I mean honestly Jotaro is the one that probably made this, but Jotaro wouldn't have depicted himself. Okay, there, I mean, it's hard to tell, but it, it, the way they've shown the, the five of them, Jotaro's been depicted like he wasn't wearing his mask. So, that makes it unlikely Jotaro made this. Still, this is really interesting. This is a cool way to tell, like, their story in some extent. You got, like, the treasure. Interesting. So, you have, you have Nagisa and Monica walking in the back. You got Jotaro walking by himself, which is, makes sense for Jotaro. And then you just have Masaru in the front and Masaru and Kotoko in the front, which makes sense because they're the hero and the fighter. That makes sense. Then the priest is in the middle by himself, but that's just because it's like for different reasons, right? So like Masaru and Kotoko are like the fighting type, so they're in the front. Jotaro's by himself in the middle because Jotaro, you know, is Jotaro. And then Nagisa and Monica are together for obvious reasons as well. So that's really cool. And then there's like the some little creature they killed or whatever. Perhaps trying to imply that they're not necessarily good guys. Oh, I think we made it to the end. Hi. I want to look at that picture over there first, but... Oh, new truth bullet. Okay, paralyze. Sure. Yes, I have obtained paralyze. Okay. Okay, so it has like a, like a, not a recoil effect, but it has a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, yeah, like a move that, that affect, that can affect nearby enemies as well as the target. Oh, yeah, water. Yeah, that makes sense. You can use it like a... Kind of like a... Yeah. Really cool. Okay. <laughs> you understand science, right? Go on, give it a try. Wipe them all out in one shot. 
So I'm assuming in the next room they're gonna have a a uh, you sure received a nice reward. Uh, a, a a scenario that's specifically made for the paralyzed bullet to show off its power. Are you still going to run away? Even with all your weapons? Still think you can't fight? Well, it's really funny because my counterpoint to that, Toko, would be why is she being given these weapons strategically at different points in the story? If this was a normal game, I'd say because Keck W, it's a game. But, like, one, it's specifically the Monokuma kids giving them to us. And two, this is Danganronpa. And you know this, it, this series is always trolling. I'm not doing this because I want to. Hmm. All right, what do we got? We got two slimes, nothing there. Let me guess, more paralyzed bullets? So oh, no, actually. Oh, well, how about that? The heroes are there to save the queen in her cage. Perhaps the witch, the queen, whatever you want to call her. I mean, she has a crown, which is why I said queen. I guess the true princess. Oh my god. I just realized something. Junko's the princess. In the story. And yet they all refer to Monica as the princess post Junko. That's wild. That's actually crazy. Oh my god. Um... There's a lot to take in here. Um, hmm. I mean, all the kids look really happy. Um, three of them are blushing. Jatharo, Monica, and Nagisa. Junko in the middle is just looks fucking evil as shit. Hmm. Oh my god, that's crazy. And then we got this guy right here. I'm assuming this is going to be Nagisa's. Yeah. Makes sense. That is wild. What a shot. Like, that would... I feel like that might be my thumbnail if I did thumbnails. <laughs> cool. I'm going to go the other way. Hey. Did you hear about this? Future Foundation is behind this whole thing. The kids, the Monokumas, everything. The incident has been calming down and Future Foundation is losing influence. They're probably trying to regain power by causing a problem and cr taking credit for the solution. Are you an idiot? What? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Of course they aren't. I love how we're literally glowing red. I mean, it's just the way this is shot, but look at look at the, the character models. Like, the bottom, like, it's because of the, I guess it's because of the the thing we're on, but the bottom half of, of, of adult and then basically all of, uh, of our, uh, our girls are glowing red. What? You know that's, for, you know that for sure. I've also heard the whole tragedy was their doing. Either way, those guys are not to be trusted. So they're definitely people spreading rumors. Like, the obvious thought would be that it's Toa Group, but the problem with that is that Toa Group got taken out too by all of this, so... There's definitely a lot of questions. I mean, obviously the Remnants of Despair could be spreading this nonsense, but... I don't know. Like, obviously the Future Foundation is... Can be kind of hardcore, and we ran into that issue in DR2, but... I mean, they are trying to do good, even if they are... You know, a bit extreme at times for the taste of uh, Kyoko and Byakuya and Makoto. Don't mess with me! You've got to be kidding me! If Future Foundation shows up to rescue the adults, I better not see you asking for help. <laughs> It'll never happen. They're literally glowing red. That's so funny. Interesting. So this is where I can use the paralyzed to test. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, it didn't work on the last one. Bro, these fucking Monokumas, they just don't attack. Nice. What the fuck? There's a sparkly over there. How the fuck do I get to that? 
Wait, can I detect that from all the way over here? Did I miss that the whole time? Saki feels like socking all the socks. That sounds sexual. Do I have to go all the way fucking back? I mean, I will. But not before I kill some Monokumas. Try that ammo from earlier. Oh, hell yeah. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I have to hit someone in water. Wow, that was a waste of bullets. That was sick, though. All right, now we're heading back. I just wanted to clean this up. That was a waste of paralyzed bullets, which seemed like a fucking broken bullet, but we got to go back. I see a sparkly that I missed. It's one of the kids, too. So we just got to run through this section. This will be really quick, though, because we've already done the challenges and we've looked at the uh, art, so there's nothing to actually do. Yep, there it is. Easy money. I can't believe I missed that. It was right here. Maybe that's why. Ah, of course. Of all the ones to miss, too. Imagine a fucking miss the character that's the set, the star of the show right now. For better or almost certainly for worse. That's still such a wild fucking shot, man. That's crazy. I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything, actually. In the windows. It's been a little while since I've actually played, so I'm not used to being as diligent as I've tried to be to get all these sparklies. I feel like they are gonna hide something in one of these fucking little window things. Yeah, like one with a body especially might have. Okay. I guess not, interesting. Yeah, that's literally exactly what I was hoping for. That's clutch. I think 10's the max, because that's what we started with, but maybe you can have more than 10. I really like the paralyzed bullets, really cool. Ah, oh, shit. Well, no, that's fine. I can still hit this first, that's fine. Not what I meant to do, though. The shielded one. It won't work even if we get a direct hit on them. Hmm. Okay, the water's connected, so we just have to dance, hit the, hit, hit the mustache Monokuma with a paralyze once it's over here. That's easy. Cool. Oh, there's more. Oh my God. I I didn't expect we'd actually be getting more of this. I think I saw Junko at, uh, too. So I'm really excited to look at those. Yeah, cash money. All right, let's scoop up all these coins, this cash money, and then we have a bunch more uh, fun storytelling to check out. Okay, I don't even know where to start on this one. Okay, so we come in here. I don't even, there's so much in this. Oh my God. So that's the Wicked Witch. So 
so the Wicked Witch turns the prince into a frog, and then Junko still loves the frog. Junko... I don't even know the order of this. I'm, like, so confused here. Junko... Junko does all she can to help the frog. She cries for the frog. I'm really like... There's love. And then the frog turns into Jotaro. Okay, so it's symbolic of the fact that Jotaro sees himself as ugly. Yeah, because Jotaro sees in the, in the mirror how ugly he is. But Junko's uses, Junko, Junko used her kindness to save... Jotaro. Interesting. So this entire this entire room is about Junko and Jotaro. Are we gonna get an individual room for how Junko saved each kid? This is really cool. I really hope we do, to be honest. I really like what story they're telling right now. Also, interesting that Okay, we're going this way. Yep, there's a sparkly at the end. So it looks like there isn't any sparklies in these windows. Until there is, of course. Huh, okay. Oh, interesting. Excavator, huh? Items more likely to drop after defeating an enemy. That's pretty cool. Why not? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? So I go back here and all of a sudden there's a million of those fuckers? Okay. Oh, I guess that's just a... Oh, it's to show off the skill maybe? Cool. No sparklies over here. Now let's check out the skill shop. Let's see what we can do here. Welcome. Do 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 That seems really good. probably should this is probably what I should get um Whee! yeah why not Sold. Okay. Sold. why not yeah I'm just looking at all the ones that they were offering I like it yeah you got the crown ones that they recommend but thanks for your business I think what I want here, let me look at my truth bullets. Um, Yeah, it, rec it likes that. There's an even more. I just want to make my break really powerful. Um, Jesus Christ, paralyze. Um, yeah, dance is really good too, though. How many? Yeah, but dance has a bunch. I think I, yeah, I think I want to use energetically here. Unparalyze. Yeah, it likes that combo too. I love how embarrassed. I love it because 
I love how I love how like you know our our girl Kamaru's gives the thumbs up and Toko just gets fucking embarrassed. That's great. Um, that's crazy that that paralyzes that powerful. So yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't think. Well, I probably should do something else with knockback. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we can't go through here. Just making sure I'm not getting sussed here. Okay, we head into a graveyard, it looks like. You... Uh, are you really planning on going back? Damn, she's just not saying anything. Oh shit, oh shit. Bro, I wasn't ready for Junk Monokuma to randomly suss up. Okay. I'm ready to fight Junk Monokuma, I just wasn't ready. Really that simple? No, I was gonna say, there's no way. Cash money. Yeah, I don't want to go down there. Uh, let me just start from the beginning. Make sure we don't miss anything. Future Foundation whatever. <laughs> future Foundation. That's what they call themselves. What future? I'm going to crush those hypocrites. Interesting. Oh, another one. How to kill demons masterpiece number three. Tie the tongue with a rope, then tie it to a really fast car to kill them. Nail a hundred gazillion nails onto them in a cool pattern and then they die. Make them drink a lot of water and then lock them in the freezer. What the fuck? Make them eat their own poo-poo and kill them with fire. Ta-da! They'll never expect it. Jesus Christ. Nothing more deranged than a child out of control. It doesn't look like there's anything else to scoop up here. So let's head down back into the sewer. There's no point in being here. Yeah, she's still trying to convince us and and and, and Kamaru is just no selling her completely. That's wild. Oh man. Okay, that's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 load up, baby. Oh yeah, give me all the paralyze. Oh yeah, look at that, I got. Nineteen paralyze? Oh, that's beautiful. No, I feel like that's so that was so that's so the right call to just to load up on my max paralyze bullets. Okay, that was slightly uh Yep, I, I literally used Toko to get them close together. I got him stuck behind Toko, so I was able to double up there. That was that was actually really clean. Future Foundation's weapon. I found something interesting. It looks like a Monokuma has broken it, so it won't be of much use, but this seems to be a weapon designed by Future Foundation. It's some kind of bullhorn-shaped gun, yep. Future Foundation always blabbered on about peace, but their weapon was crushed by a Monokuma in a second. Useless piece of junk now serves them right. I mean, yeah, the weapon could be crushed by a Monokuma easily. That doesn't mean the weapon isn't powerful. It's not It's not all that hard to take a gun apart. That doesn't mean a gun can't kill a gazillion people. So obviously I gotta I gotta snatch this up right here. Um But I probably have to Do I have all of them? Oops, no, that's not what I meant to do. Um, is there any way I could like check? Like, I, I'm, I'm like honestly like curious. Can I? Wow, I have all of them. Nice. Okay, so that's wild that I only found two of them last time. 
And yet in this chapter and the first chapter, I got all of them. That's crazy that like, I just could not see them in chapter two. That's wild. So obviously we know where we need to go, but I want to just explore the, um, explore the sewer a little to see if there's any secrets that I can get over here real quick. Doesn't look like it, but you never know. That's what I hate about this game, actually. I'm trying to, because part of it is like, I don't like, you know, given that I, I know for sure, like I want to get as many things as possible. So like, whether you're someone who's like never played this game and they're just following Danganronpa with me or someone who, um, you know, has played this game and watched Let's Plays, I want to get as much out of it as possible. Like, obviously, I think the biggest appeal is that I do talk a fuck ton about what I think about this type of shit. And there's like a lot of, I like to think sometimes interesting commentary I can add. But I also want to get as much of the like little narrative pieces of this game as we can find. Especially because it's not a, I mean, even doing all that, this is probably going to be a bit shorter than any of my mainline Let's Plays. Where I ironically miss a lot more in the visual novels because I think for V3, if there's like a bunch of like special scenes, I might, I might get someone to make me like a guide to tell me like, um, like how to get like all the like extra things. Cause you know how like in Danganronpa 1, there's the, uh, hmm. th there's the, uh, there's the bathhouse scene. And then in Danganronpa 2, there's like a gazillion of them and you need like special items and stuff. Assuming that's a thing in V3, though. Um, where's Shirakuma? Oh. Bro just gonna... Um, hello? Damn. Well, that was sus. Hey! You too! Well, at least Shirakuma, Shirakuma's happy to see us. What the fuck? Yay! Yay! You made it back safe! I'm glad. Now, I want to hear the whole story. But first... Welcome back. Come, leap into my arms. Rizzler Shirokuma over here. Jeez, this guy developed a taste for hugs fast. That's what I'm saying. Oh my god, fucking Komaru's doing the little finger thing. The oo Come on, don't be modest. Do it, do it! Shirokuma's a little too excited to get up and personal with uh, Komaru. I, yeah, I guess I can. I haven't taken a bath for a while, so I might be a little sticky. Ew. Oh, how about you comb out your hair, take a bath, and change your clothes and undergarments first? Damn, Shirokuma. Jeez, pushy. Why don't I just wrap myself in a bow for you, too? I think we would all be okay with Toko wrapping herself in a bow for us. Well... I was trying to do a dirty joke since usually I'm very clean. Has a change of pace. Yeah, I don't know if I buy that there, uh, Mr. White. Anyway, you two must be tired. Why don't you just rest for a while? With the mood in here, I don't think I could sleep even if I wanted to. Aside from you, everyone seems unwelcoming. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, though. That's not it. They're just shy. That's not how I describe it. I like how right now you can kind of see that there's a bunch of clicks. Like there's there's that one girl losing it in the background near the uh, like ladder thing. But you have like a bunch of groups right now that are all together. I mean, not just one, but two girls in school uniforms? That's enough to make a man's heart burst. I guess. I've heard that you only appreciate being high school age after you've graduated high school. That's fair, I suppose. I think, like, my take on that, because a lot of people will say, so at this point, I'm, like, closer to 30 than I am to 20. I'm getting fucking old. Um, not really, but, you know. Uh, my take on the whole thing that like because because you know you'll hear adults say that like oh you know like when your youth or when you're in high school or whatever it's like the greatest years of your life and i think there's like some truth to it i think generally like school i think most people can agree 
the majority of people don't fucking miss school. I think being in high school is a it is for me for me personally was like a cool time, but at the same time, nobody like most people don't enjoy school. I feel like even people who are like very um, educated and 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 you know enjoy learning things. I think most people can agree, especially at, um, that there's a lot about schooling that they don't like, right? Because, like, I'm someone that loves to learn new things. I find all different types of stuff fascinating. It's part of why, like I said, and I still don't do it enough, but even with, like, when I react to, like, anime and stuff, I want to react to, like, every genre of anime. Um, and I've still, like, there's still a lot of genres that I've underexplored. But, um... It's kind of that same mindset. I find, like, all different types of stuff interesting, but I don't think that many people really enjoy school. Like, maybe you enjoy it as certain classes, but as an overall experience. And that's despite the fact that, like, my high school was hella chill. Like, because my... The school that I went to... Because uh, I went through the same school up until high school, and that school was pretty... Was, was kind of ghetto. Um, you know, it was fine, but it was, you know... But, uh, then I, you know, high school was, uh, my high school was, I, th I th personally really loved my high school. I thought it was pretty nice. It was really chill. Um, and I had a cool time. I, I, I like, even though I'm, like, a nerd, but I, I also, like, I can kind of vibe with anyone. And, like, I could talk about all different types of shit. And I'm not, like, a socially awkward person. I think a lot of people like me are. But, like, I... And people just tend to like me. I've kind of always been, I guess, fortunate enough to be kind of cool in that regard. Even though I'm not, like... I just don't make enemies, I guess. You know? I don't know. A little bit of a tangent there, hey, though. everyone! Aren't you glad these young girls came back to us? But the point is, nobody fucking... The vast majority of people don't like school. It's not really designed to be liked. It's designed hey, to be tolerable. Totally welcoming. What the hell are you talking about? Are your ears busted or something? Shirakuma's just an eternal optimist, that's all. Dude, why is Komaru still doing the finger thing? Hey, Shirakuma, thanks for the offer, but I really don't feel like resting right now. Komaru, what happened? Did the connection not work? It did. No, the connection worked fine. But I'm just not sure Future Foundation is going to come through. Yeah. I see. So that's why you're so down. It's almost worse because it's like you got in touch with, with Future Foundation yet. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, you even got to see your brother as cool as that is. But in the grand scheme of things, you realize that your situation's a little worse than you even thought. I'm sorry. Do you want me to pat your head? No. Pat her head? How many heads have you crushed with a hand like that? Okay, Toko, calm down. But, like, I, I, I still agree with uh, <laughs> denying that uh, offer. Like I said, I don't do anything like that. Yeah, I know. I trust you, Shirakuma. I mean, I think I do too, but it's still funny to dog on Shirakuma. You're the only one I can trust anymore. Jesus Christ! Holy shit! <laughs> Damn. Yeah, their relationship is pretty damaged right now. I'm really curious, like, I'm curious if it's going to stay that way, like, moving into Chapter 4, or if they're going to kind of, like, reconcile by the end of this chapter. Hey, Shirakuma, what should I do now? Because Choko's in this interesting position where she still feels, like, kind of responsible for Komaru and is still hanging around. But I am wondering if we're going to get, like, a full-blown separation soon. I... I don't know what to do anymore. To tell you the truth, Haiji and the others are in a conference discussing exactly that. It did seem like there were less people around from the from the, behind, the graphics that we were getting of the rest of the hideout. Why don't you go on in and join them? I feel like this is going to go horribly wrong. I feel like Toko and Haiji are going to get into a shouting match, but... That's not a good idea. Have you already forgotten you ignored his warning and went to Toa Tower? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Toko on this one. Oh, that's nothing. That was just a small misunderstanding. We 
still have the same goal. Do we? I to mean, I... stop these out of control kids and free the mistreated adults. Isn't that right? I mean, yes. I, 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 I suppose that's all factual. I, I didn't really think it through that far. Oh well, yeah, there's also that far where Kamaru is more focused on just surviving. I think more than anything. But to be fair, it's kind of in line with um, Haiji as well. No, really. I know you can do it. Huh? Rather, you have to do it. You have to be able to save the adults. Because if you don't, who else will? Sometimes it's that simple, Kamaru. What are you saying? She's the complete opposite kind of girl you want for this. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you just have to step up and there's no other choice. That's just the way life is sometimes. This is Armageddon. Jesus. So we gotta band together and destroy that kid asteroid. Oh, oh, we're talking about the movie Armageddon. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because I was just like, well, that's a combat. But yeah, the A in Armageddon is capitalized. That's just a direct uh, fucking movie reference. Come on. Our future is in there. I've seen a lot of those type of movies. I really, I, I'm a big like space guy. I really love like space shit. So I've seen a lot of those. For better or worse, I've seen a lot of the movies that involve, like, um, the end of the world in, like, a space context, or just anything like that. Most of them. Not all of them, but... Jeez, what's wrong with him? Interesting. So we got a bunch of people to talk to. Oh, that girl's not losing her mind. It's funny, because now I feel like it looks like there's a little bit more people. Less giant clicks, though. Um, uh, are you all right? Oh, we're getting full voice acting for this. That's pretty cool. This guy was the one shouting at the monitor before. Something about his wife? Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn, bro's inconsolable. So, how did he end up like this? I think you could put two and two together, uh, Komaru. That was kind of strange. Let's talk to this girl. How much longer do I have to stay down here? Days and days of this goddamn place. Mm. No more. I can't take it anymore. Damn. Maybe it's better to just leave her alone. I think it's better to leave them all alone. Unfortunately, they're get everyone's getting more and more desperate as the days roll by. You went back here. Yeah, we also, yeah, the, I, I I actually, what the fuck? I just saw her and she, there she is. That's so funny. She's, <laughs> now you see her? Now you don't. <laughs> now you see her? Now you don't. Fucking Hiroko, uh, Hiroko back there. Um, Got a bunch of people freaking out over here, there. Oh, there's actually a sparkly back here. This is why you look. In the training of stacking ice cream, a finally a way to skillfully stack ice cream by Mayuko Aranami. Spike books, I assume is a reference to Spike Chunsoft. Thinking that she had no special talents whatsoever, Konomi Tenri gave up on her current life. After hanging on for 17 years, she finally realizes her special ability on the brink of her death I have the talent to destroy other people's talents? A girl who destroys other people's talents and a boy who doesn't think he has any talent at all. Just what road will these two take? What the fuck? That's interesting. I have the talent to destroy other people's talent. Well, that's a creepy book. Huh. Wild. Um. That's an interesting. Uh, 
A girl who destroys other people's talents and a boy who doesn't think he has any talent at all, huh? And they are going to discuss this. Toko! Interesting, and that's where she goes. Hey, you were also a student at Hope Speak Academy, right? What's your special talent? You're right. Didn't I tell you? My talent is writing. They used to call me the ultimate writing prodigy. Amazing! Wow, that's so cool. A novelist. That's really an admirable. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to me to be admired by a talentless girl like you. Dude, dude, I feel like that's a moment where like Toko's like resisting the urge to call her something very uh, shameful. Jeez. Just to, to rub it in even further. Huh. You think I'm talentless? But really, I'm super good at something. She's gonna say something stupid. Hmm. You're gonna say you're super good at reading manga or something, right? That's literally what I was almost said. Oh. oh my god. What the fuck, Komaru? Damn. Wait, you were really going to say that? Yeah, dude, Toko's literally me right now because I had that same thought, but I also didn't say it because I was like, she's not... It's gonna be stupid, but it's not actually gonna be that. And then she actually was gonna say that. That's wild. Oh, I'm special in tons of ways. Like how I use a desk mat instead of a fan when it's hot. Or how I only get called on in class when I don't know the answer. Let me guess, you never know the answer. The only thing like, normal about you is your stupidity. Mm -hmm. Kind of wish I was more normal in that area then. Hmm. Now that I think about it, your reactions are all pretty normal too. Stop. It. No, stop! Don't treat me like a normal person anymore. And? How fast do you run a 100 meter dash? Mm -hmm. I want to say 18 seconds. And what's your favorite music? Top 40. What the fuck? That is like literally... I don't care what anyone says, that's not a normal answer. Hmm. Horrifying. Jeez, mm -hmm. stop it already. You're making me sad. What's your favorite saying? Bro, I I swear to God that crossed through my mind. What the fuck? I need to start saying these out loud. What the hell? I feel like for me, I like when it rains, it pours. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. I'm trying to think of ones that I say uh, sucks to suck. Um, or if... Uh, I'm trying to think of like one any that I might that I actually say a lot during like videos on the channel. I feel like there's one that I do say a lot on the channel, but I can't think of what it is. But yeah, all's well that ends well. And your favorite food? Mm -hmm. Um, it's swallow's nest and tuna eyeballs. Okay, it got weird. Huh? What? Huh? Huh? Something wrong? No. I must have. Heard you wrong. What's your favorite food? Mm. I told you. Swallow's nest, tuna eyeballs. Oh, I also like kangaroo meat. Okay, then. Yeah, it, it got weird. Girl's shaking over there. I'm gonna pretend we never had this conversation. I mean... I'm not one to judge. I've never had those things, so it's hard for me to judge. If you say your favorite food is Brussels sprouts, I'll fucking judge you. Sweet potatoes, I'll judge you. There, I, I like most foods. There's not that many things I dislike, so it's like kind of a short list. List of charity work performed by Toa Group. Okay, here's some more uh, propaganda for Toa. Exactly three months to the day has passed since the true ultimate despair died. I'd love to know when this book was written. Because, like, we don't... I'd love to know exactly how long it's been just right now where we are since the end of Danganronpa 1. Though it isn't completely certain, it can be assumed that the world will return to its former calmer state. To commemorate the peaceful future, let us celebrate some of Toa Group's charity work. Development of the air purifier effective against the toxic air in the atmosphere. It's really cool that the air purifiers come up so much in this game because we know that J Junko, of all people, was using presumably Toa's air purifier with her um, 
in the first game in Hope's Peak. Distributed their inventions throughout the world, manufactured and delivered weapons to combat the despair, supplied high-performance gas masks, built shelters in war-torn areas, detoxified portions of the land and sea. That last part's crazy. I thought I heard a strange noise earlier. It's okay though, right? We aren't found out? Uh, no, but I feel like it's coming soon. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we were followed by Nagisa or Kotoko or all of them. It's going to be just fine. I think. I, I sure hope so. I don't know if it's going to be fine, bro. But I really do feel like I can hear them. Their laugh. I think that's more you're just losing it. It's going to be all right. Sure it is, right? Monokumas aren't going to get down here. Yeah. Keep keep your optimism. It's all you have right now, right? It's hope. Before it all turns to despair. Just like Junko would have wanted. It, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's no use. I can hear them. The laughing. That's crazy. He's losing it. I think everyone is. Yeah, Komaru can sympathize with that. Just waiting down here to die. I would rather go up to the surface and die there. Then what's stopping you? I, I can't die in a place like this. Let me out of here. This person looks calm from their silhouette. I heard you're from Future Foundation. Yeah. oh And what's wrong with that? I've heard rumors. Future Foundation wants to destroy this entire town. Yeah, that's that's the propaganda going around. Huh? Uh, of course they don't. Who's spreading a rumor like that? I don't know, but I know there are plenty of people here who believe it. Fair enough. You should be careful. That's actually good advice. I respect it. I mean, of all the people that we got a chance to actually talk to prior to going into the meeting, that's like the only person who was like actually nice to us. What is Hope's Peak Elementary? Hope's Peak Elementary is, as the name suggests, an elementary school associated with the world leading educational institution known as Hope's Peak Academy. However, acceptance at Hope's Peak Elementary does not guarantee a seat at the academy. Only scouted students can attend. But applications for Hope's Peak Academy keep, uh, sorry, Hope's Peak Elementary keep flooding in. Why? Because the elementary is so dedicated to providing a high level of education. Like many private elementary schools, Hope's Peak Academy is, sorry, oh, it's so instinctive. Hope's Peak Elementary uses an entrance exam with an interview segment to judge applicants. Because of this diligence, many of the elementary students are scouted for Hope's Peak Academy. Hope's Peak Elementary is also a research institution dedicated to raising the talent of the children, which, you know, is similar to Hope's Peak Academy. They're both were basically, I mean, one of the reasons they existed was for the funding to research talent, right? And obviously having the ultimates, having the most talented individuals at the school was in and of itself one of the ways in which they could research talent. Oh, yeah, the one of the only beds that doesn't have an injured. Oh, daily effort. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, we're equipping that. I'll take I'll take added EXP. That's a fiver too. That's a big boy. Uh, I think we went yeah we went in here already. I don't know if we went into the second one. So there might be I can't remember if we went in here. So there might be another. Yep, there is another sparkly to check out here. The tragedy was a Future Foundation conspiracy. Although Future Foundation's stated mission is to help the world recover from the tragedy, our editorial department has received a tip that claims Future Foundation themselves caused the incident in the first place. To no one at the publication's surprise, the true ultimate despair is at the top of Future Foundation. The ironic thing is, in Danganronpa 2, this is what Junko tried to do. 
The true ultimate despair's grand ambition was to reduce the world to a state of total despair. That's true. By inventing an opponent, they significantly complicate the situation to further plunge the world into despair. That part's not. This opponent is Future Foundation. That organization was intentionally built to be dysfunctional and try to combat the despair with increasingly drastic measures. The reason why it took so long for the incident to settle down was because Future Foundation was protecting the despair. That's like really ironic given, if anything, there were rogue members of the Future Foundation protecting the despair from the Future Foundation who just wanted to kill all the despairs. So like, that's so f funny. There could be no other explanation. Consider this, the ones who developed the air purifier was not Future Foundation, but Toa Group. I mean, that's like, that's such a like false equivalency, it's crazy. Isn't it strange to think that Future Foundation, on whom the fate of the world relies, are technologically inferior to a single company? No, it's you guys have different technological specialties. That That's hardcore propaganda. Out of all of them, that was one of the most like, we are pushing an agenda ones that I've heard so far. Let's talk to Hiroko. Yo, Coco and Fufu. Heard you went outside. Love those nicknames. Well, I figured you would. How should I put it? There's something different about you two compared to these people. They have lady balls. Speaking of lady balls. What do you mean? How can I say it? The air around you, it's different. You two are always facing forward. Yeah, despite what either of them say, despite how Komaru would try to say otherwise. But in here, the air is getting heavier and heavier. Everyone's stressed. Mm. Stuck in a dark and moldy place like this? How could you not be? Fair. Anyway, you went outside. Can you tell me about it? Did you get some kind of clue about people with wristbands? Yeah, we collected a fair few of uh, those uh, hit lists. And that's what we're here to cash in. Um... What's going on? Enough dilly-dallying. Hurry up and show her. You always say normal this and normal that, but now you're freezing up? So cruel. What do you mean? Hmm. Nothing. I was just saying something normal to use your favorite word. God, the tension between them is wild right now. Like, obviously, Toko's always throwing jabs anyways, but there's such an obvious tension right now. Yeah, yeah, Hiroko hey, noticing hey. it too. Um, what's up with you two? Am I not allowed to cash in now? What the fuck? Hey, hey! What, do you both have food poisoning or something? Wait, I really can't? That's wild. How many more, like, dialogue trees do we have here? Hey, hey. Okay, that, that that was it. Okay. That was still fun that we had a couple lines there. All right, let's go in the meeting. Let's talk to hygiene, friends. It doesn't matter if they're just kids. We have to kill them before they kill us. Unfortunately, it's heading in that direction. But the kids have those Monokumas on their side. We have to do something about them first. Of course. What do you mean by that? It's like I said, we have to take them out somehow. Mm hmm I'm at my wit's end here. If I stay underground another minute, I'm gonna lose it. I'm telling you, without a plan, a fight right now is far too risky. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna, like, it, yeah, it's, that, that's kind of where Hygie's coming from, too, from what we've seen so far. It's like, you know, leading everyone to slaughter is pointless. Hygie, as leader, what do you think? Bro's got a chain on him. Like, uh, uh, like what, coming out of his, like, pocket or something? That's kind of cool. I have everyone's lives in my hands. There's no way I'd put you all in danger. Sure. Or at least not, like... I mean, I mean, putting them all in danger is one thing, but, like... What, it, it calculated risk, right? But this just feels like leading a, a lambs to slaughter. I'm completely against a suicide yeah. attack. Even for those who are prepared to die. 
Sure. So you want us to just stay here? <laughs> You're telling us to spend our lives in this shitty place, constantly afraid of those kids? My principle is to not waste lives. As a leader, I cannot accept a plan that defies that. Yeah, I like that. Not wasting lives. B but I'm not telling you to stay here forever. I'm just saying now is not the right time. But then you run into the counter argument. When are we ever going to get the right opportunity? Does anyone else have any ideas? Haiji, is it all right if these girls join the conference after you guys take a break? H Hello. You two. Why are you two here? I already told you, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I feel like that face doesn't... I get that they only have so many sprites, but I feel like that face doesn't quite line up with the tone of voice and what they're actually going for right here with Haiji. Now, now. It's not the time to argue. You guys have to get along, especially at a time like this. Regardless, this conference is over. Hmm. No, not yet. It's not like you've considered all the options yet, right? What other options are there other than fight and stay here? Remember the idea I brought up before? Did you consider that? Oh? I already told you. It's impossible. I'd love to hear it. I understand how you feel, but... Hey, what exactly are you guys talking about? It's... about persuading the children. Huh. Not gonna lie, I, I do think that does seem unlikely, but I'd, I, I'd love to hear more about your thoughts on it, Shirokuma. Persuade? That's your idea? It's obviously a little late for that, don't you think? I mean, some would argue it's never too late. But you guys are all humans. You can come to an agreement with words instead of violence. That might be uh, giving uh, humans a little too much credit. <laughs> you really think a group of monsters like those kids can be reasoned with? The fact that they're kids makes this both more and less likely. Kind of interesting to think about, honestly. I bet they'd kill us the moment we showed up to treat with them. It's certainly possible. Plus this group here, there can't be peace with those kids. You know what they've done. I mean, again, though, like, it's weird because, like, one, they've suffered through horrible things, and two, they've essentially been brainwashed by Junko on top of that. Because it was, it was, because they were pushed to the edge, and at some point, Junko got to them. Like, we don't know the specifics of how that worked, but it's very clear that they hated their parents because their parents did awful things to them. And in the process, somewhere along the line, Junko showed up. And Junko said, hey, maybe you should kill him. And then they probably did, based on what we've seen. I'm assuming they killed their parents, and then they just didn't stop at their parents. And Junko was just smiling the whole time. I would assume that's what happened, based on what we've seen so far. But it's clear that they were, like on the verge of going psycho, and then Junko just gave him a little tap. But, but still, why don't you at least try? It's like Shirakuma said, we're all humans. Did you already forget who we're dealing with? Remember what that P.E. Punk showed us? Yeah, that's true. Masaru, that was a literal, like, mountain of corpses. Oh, wow, we're actually... Just because they gave birth to us and raised us, they thought they could control us all. But it is also showing, like, the fact that, like, the kids are afraid, and that's the genesis of their actions. Not to say that their actions are forgivable in the slightest, but it is... I like the... I like the nuance of it, right? That it's like... We can say that these kids are... In this game, we can say that these kids are evil while also recognizing the fact that they're evil. The genesis of their evil comes from evil, right? And so it's a cycle of pain, a cycle of violence, and how this cycle of violence is then, you know, making these adults hate the kids, right? And it's just kind of... And, and, and whether we're able to end the cycle of violence in this game or not, it's still, you know, one way or another, it's... It, it, it's um. It's just a really unfortunate situation all around. It's complicated, so I respect it quite a bit. As Hero, 
I hunted them down and let everyone go free. <gasps> Those brats don't even care about family. Things like persuasion? It will never work. Uh, that's right. They're not human, they're demons. Fair. I mean, I, 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 it's one of those things, right? Where it's like, it, it's a tough deal. And it's one of the things I really like about this game is like framing like children as the villains is very interesting because you, there's kind of a built in sympathy you have for them because they're kids, but none of that can excuse the terrible actions that they've taken and that's even on top of the fact that they've been pushed in that direction given the traumas they've experienced and this is their way of coping but obviously you know there's also the junko element that we know about at this point where like clearly she was involved in pushing them in this direction and not just that even if we tried to use family to persuade them it's not possible the survivors here don't have any children anyway damn huh Wait, you mean everyone here doesn't have any kids? But there's so many adults here. Because all the kids killed their parents first. It's probably not a coincidence. Uh -huh. Those kids are focusing on parents first. Yep. W why? It's pretty obvious, isn't it, Komaru? Who knows? They have a deep-seated hatred of the ones who raised them. It's messed up. I mean, it is in some scenarios, but not in general. I mean, we know for a fact that from what we've seen, um, three uh, so far, every uh, uh, every parent has sucked between um, Masaru, Jatoro, and Kotoko. So I would imagine Nagisa's parents, not great. And Monica's parents, not great. Just a hunch. It's impossible to persuade a group like that. I'm completely against the idea. But if fighting is impossible... And persuasion is impossible. What are you going to do? I mean, Haiji wants to wait for the perfect moment that might never come, but I get where he's coming from. Didn't I already say it? The best plan is to just wait for a while for a good opportunity. But I think this is where Toko's gonna be like, that opportunity is never gonna come unless you make it. And exactly how long mm -hmm. is this for a while? I don't know. But now's the time to toughen up and endure it. You say wait and endure. You're just repeating the fact you're not going to do anything. This is really tough because I think both Haiji and Toko have good points here. So it's really tough to kind of make a comment on who's necessarily right. Because I don't think either of them are necessarily wrong. You're an outsider. How could you possibly understand? I mean, we're all in the same shit sandwich here to quote a certain show that I watched uh, not that long ago. I am the leader of this resistance. I have to think about the lives of everyone here. What resistance? Yeah, that's a good point. It's not really a resistance. A useless leader like you? You're even more of a burden than this chick. Damn. What did you say? Okay, at least this time the face kind of matches the tone. Hey, you too? You don't think about others and just say whatever you want. You know, different than those kids. Damn. Like, I mean, that's so obviously not true. Regardless of how you feel about her, you know, her bold takes or, or just her aggressive behavior, she clearly is different than those kids. And that's not even getting into the fact that she, you know, also just so happens to have a serial killer residing within her. You're the one who's a child. Complaining, not even doing anything. Mm. If you don't like the way I lead, then you can leave. No one is going to stop you. She didn't even want to come back here in the first place, so trust me, she's fine with leaving. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm leaving. But I know you're wrong. Let's go, Omaru. Oh, is Omaru not going? Ah, oh, the music even stopped. You're the one who's wrong, Toko. Oh, shit. Huh? What are you saying? You don't understand. You don't understand the feelings of the weak at all. 
See, this is interesting because this is based on the misconception that Toko's always been the way she is. Like, even though she obviously, you know, struggles a little talking to people, nothing compared to in the past and stuff, she's grown so much as a character. But this is a really interesting, like, angle because us as the viewers have played Danganronpa 1 and understand how much Toko's grown, which is something that Komaru can't relate to because she's only known Komaru over the course of this game. But it's like, it's really interesting coming from the perspective of us who know that, um, who know that Toko has grown so much as a character since the, uh, um, but Komaru hasn't necessarily been there to witness how much stronger she's grown. Ironically, while Komaru herself is growing on a, on an arc to get stronger over the course of this game. So it's, it's kind of, there's kind of a really like interesting dynamic there. And we have a unique perspective as the viewers of the games, the players of the games. I, I'm not blaming them for being weak. I'm blaming them for using it as an excuse. Yeah, that's a very important distinction actually. That's exactly my point. The reason they don't do anything is because they can't build confidence. I would know. Sure. You're someone strong, with talent, chosen for Hope's Peak Academy and Future Foundation. Now we're kind of getting into this whole thing again, the, the whole idea that, you know, you're special, you're chosen, therefore you're greater, which is obviously one of the main commentaries of Danganronpa is the fact that that's a load of crap. Um, but it's permeated not only through the games, but through the society in this universe. That there is this expectation that people like Toko, people like Byakuya, people like uh, Kyoko, people like uh, Hina and Sakura, and all the characters in the, in, in, you know, all the Ultimates are special uh, because they do have a talent for something. They are, you know, elite in some manner, some form. Uh, that it makes them different than your average everyday person, right? And, and obviously, you know, time and time again, one of the main points of the series has been to say that that's just a load of crap. And it's kind of like they get their cake and they eat it too because they get to be like super anime by having their these ultimates while also making commentary on them. But, uh, yeah. You don't know how people like me feel. You don't know what it's like. See, the counterpoint would be she is like you. You guys aren't very different and that's unfortunately what komaru can't see and i understand why she thinks that way I, i'm not blaming komaru at all for that but that's just kind of the 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 permeated misconception of the society of the danganronpa universe that's just a really cool dynamic that we have especially when you have a game like this where it's two protagonists one who is an ordinary girl and one who is you know this ultimate writing prodigy and ultimate murderous fiend I don't understand what it's like to be weak. You think I'm chosen? You must be kidding. What's so great about me, huh? I'm a walking inferiority complex. Yeah, but even though that's entirely true, you've managed to overcome the fact that you're a walking inferiority complex, which only further shows your strength to someone like Komaru. But that's strength because that that's strength of the spirit, not strength of, an, of 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 some stupid title. I don't have confidence. I never have. But what's going to change if I just keep saying that, using that as an excuse every day? There you go. That's what makes that's what actually makes you special, Toko. I I learned that from the killing. I suffered for it, but I did something about it. God, Toko's so good in this game. So for you to say that I was just chosen like i had nothing to do with it i won't allow it good for you toko you should feel that way the, the conversations between toko and komaru and we've had like quite a few of these like deep character moments between these two characters where they just spill their guts to each other it's fucking fantastic every time please wait guys Ooh, fighting is a big no-no what the fuck Monokumas are attacking us! And there it is. I kind of had a feeling that was coming sooner or later. That would, especially the way like the story's been structured this this chapter. Like I feel like 
without them attacking the base, it's like we're not getting anywhere. Like, this chapter would just be way too long. <laughs> oh, jeez, cutscene, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's really funny. That's great. Right. Oh my god. Well, that's horrifying. Are we about to go straight into a battle scene? No, no, we're just go. Oh my god! <laughs> Never mind, we're just going straight into mass murder. Well, Hygie's gonna blame us, and it might. So. That's lovely. I'm assuming Haiji will survive. I'm not sure what? if anyone else were. Why are there Monokumas here? I wonder why. How did the children find out about this place? That's not important right now. Just run! Maybe we should run too. Wait! Please! Protect everyone! I mean, yeah, the only ones who are going to be capable are Komaru and Toko. P protect If this keeps up, everyone will be killed! If you can at least buy us some time! Mm -hmm. I beg you, please! We need you! Fair enough. Now's not the time to argue. If we don't fight, our lives are in danger too. Yeah, that's fair. Fine. Damn. Damn, dude. Toko and Ko uh, Komaru. I was about to say Kyoko. <laughs> fuck the fuck. Toko Please and Komaru are going everyone. through shit. Everyone's going to be killed. How did the Monokumas get here? Now's not the time to worry about that. No. Stop. I don't want to die. Sorry I'm not saying anything. No, please stop. I don't know why I did that. That was so dumb. Fucking well that's not good. Um paralyzed, I guess. Oh, there's Looks bullets. Like it's too late for some of them. Damn. <laughs> I missed that girl. Thank you for saving everyone. I didn't save everyone, but okay. I killed that one. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I feel like Hygie's gonna lose his fucking shit. That was kind of a cool little, like, sequence, though. You just had, like, Monokumas just flooding in. And you have to save as many people as you can. That was kind of cool. This is so cruel. Oh, yeah. That's the reality of the situation, Komaru. This is your fault. Yeah, I saw that coming. Huh? This whole time I've been so careful keeping this place a secret. 
Mm hmm I convinced people to stay underground. Stay hidden so they couldn't be followed. But after all that, this happens. The only explanation is that they followed you! You brought them here! Oh, that's some good voice acting. We... we did? When you contacted Future Foundation, the kids must have honed in on you. Mm. They tailed you, and you brought them right back here! It's all your fault! You did this to all of us! Oh, IG's VA is going for it. <laughs> that's not fair! I... I didn't want this to happen! Oh, wait! These two protected us, didn't they? If they never came back after their stupid mission, this place wouldn't have been ambushed. Th that's a baseless accusation. You're just making an assumption. I wouldn't say it's baseless, but it is an assumption. Well, as long as I'm assuming, I guess I'll go one further and say you guys are spies for the kids. Well, that literally makes no sense because if they were spies for the kids, they would have just let the Monokumas kill everyone at this point. Like, what What do they possibly gain at, at, at helping anyone here? Like, I, I don't, like, from my, from everything we've seen, if, if it, you know, if you didn't have Toko or, I guess, Jill and Komaru, you guys all would have died, and that's just the end of the story, because you had nowhere to run. That's not funny. What could we possibly gain from that? Well, it's not even that. It's just the fact, why would we have let anyone live? Why wouldn't, you would be dead right now, Haiji. I remember an old folk tale about a war between birds and beasts. By using the face of both bird and beast, the bat played both sides. Hmm. Because they're, uh, about to bees? But because he couldn't get too close to either. In the end, the bat ends up alone. Interesting. What are you trying to say? I think bird it's pretty obvious. Beast. I wonder which side you're on. Okay, huh? it got worse. What Do now? This again. Please make it stop. Why? What are they going to show us Why this time? Now? What is that? What, you're asking me? Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> the fuck? Hey, what are you That was so weird. Lock him up. Damn, lock him up. Please. Holy Please. shit, they're putting us in jail. Interesting. They knock us out? Wait, are we gonna play as Toko? Damn it! They take away my stun gun, then they stuff me into this dusty room. Well, the room's dusty, so I don't think it's gonna be hard to get to Jill. It's all her fault. I hope she chokes on a fish she caught herself. That's weirdly specific. Oh, I guess I don't want her to actually die. Yeah, we all know you love her. Whether as a best friend or something else, you definitely love her. Ugh, I gotta focus on Master Biakia now. Not that stupid idiot. <laughs> I can't just stay trapped in a place like this. I gotta hurry and save me. Yeah, she's about to sneeze. I, I gotta save... I mean, to be fair, this is probably going to help you in that fact, uh, achieving that goal, Toko. That was close. I was about to sneeze there. God, that face is so wild. Ugh, I can't take this dust anymore. I gotta find Omaru and... Let me guess, Achu? Yeah, no. seriously. Why am I thinking about her at a time like this? So irritating. Yeah, it's gonna be wild if Toko, if we ever get to, like, the end of the game and Toko has, like, one of her fantasy moments about Byakuya and fucking, fucking Komaru slips in. That, that, that gets, you know, that'd be really funny. <laughs> yeah, this is a very fitting Danganronpa theme for this moment. When you contacted Future Foundation, the kids must have honed in on you. I get what they're doing, but this literally just happened, which is always kind of a silly thing when they do this. They tailed you, and you brought them right back here. It's all your fault! You did this to all of us! Hmm. It's all my fault. 
Everyone got hurt because of me. Oh, I love that internal monologue voice with like that little effect and the tone. That's really cool. He's right. If I didn't insist on coming back here. That was, that, that was, I, I really like that. And if I had just tried harder, if I were a better person, I could have protected them. Damn. Now that, that, that's definitely not something that you should put on yourself, Komaru. I couldn't do it. You tried your best. Because I'm weak. It's just like Togo said. I'm so weak. But what's wrong with that? I kept saying, I can't do anything. Always relying on others. I never even thought about saving others. And now this happens. There's always a first time for everything, Kamaru. How about you try to save people now, starting now? Sneak, sneak! What? Sneakity sneak! Kotoko? What the fuck? Tralala! Oh. Why, hello there! Hello! Hello there! Um, I mean, I knew... I mean, you had to pop back up sooner or later. This is, by all accounts, your chapter. But, and I was also wondering how the hell are we going to get out of jail, but, bro, is Kotoko about to help us? What is happening? My name is Kotoko Hatsugi. I'm the fighter in the Warriors of Hope. Yeah, you gave us this introduction in the prologue. Formerly known as Lil Ultimate Drama. Well, not like it matters at all. I think you said almost exactly that verbatim. Oh! What the fuck? What the fuck is that thing? Woohoo! Sorry for the intrusion. Thank you very much. What the fuck? Phew! I reached way back for that reference. I bet you did. I had to deal with baby boomers all the time, so my gags are kind of dated. Ha! <sighs> That's all I have to say about that one. And speaking of old... Do I even want to know where you're going with this one? Oh, I can't think of any follow-up. I must be nervous. I really love Kotoko, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> She's really funny. She's really cute. Like, I love her whole gimmick. Her hair is fucking stupid. And I actually really hate that bow on her head. I like the horns, but I really don't like the bow. But... <sighs> My heart is racing faster than 16 shots a second! Master Takahashi would be proud! Okay, she's just hitting like a million. I assume these are all video game references. I guess this could also be anime though. Um. That might not even be. I mean, it could be any Japanese thing, but it's probably video games or anime. Yeah, yeah, I already know what you want to say. You were going to tell me a fighter should be a boy. I think that's the last thing on Komaru's mind right now. I think she'd rather say, what the fuck is going on? And speaking of boys, I've heard some people say that slugs don't have a gender. But actually, slugs have both male and female bodies at once. I have no idea if that's true, to be fair. People who go around spreading half-assed lies about slugs deserve swift punishment. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that was false, because that would make this joke funnier. Fighter kick! Punch. <laughs> what the fuck? I love that animation. It's so stupid. Like, what the fuck? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> yeah, that is that that is a, a fair face to have, Komaru. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what I told them. That I didn't want to be fighter because I'm not good at PE. Yeah. But they just decided, you're the fighter. GG's. It's interesting, right? Because, like, they do that dumb, like, super over-the-top joke. And it's like, oh, here's her bloomers. And it's very, like, playing into the themes of, like, the darker themes of the chapter. And I think it's very much intentionally designed to make you feel uncomfortable. Like, obviously, it's playing into, like, the meta joke of, like... This is a Japanese game, and, like, obviously it's being consumed, you know, primarily by Japanese, a Japanese audience. And, you know, Japan has this kind of unique, Japan kind of sees 
it as like with anime or like fictional characters like this it like you know they just view it a little differently generally speaking um and there's a lot of people uh on this side of the world who do as well and like to be honest like i don't really give that much of a fuck about fucking animated shit and what people are into but it's definitely playing into the kind of meta joke of that in like a really weird way it's very danganronpa is what i'm trying to say it's 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 certainly something i mean i am really good at physical education though and then she says that line jesus christ kodoko please stop how about you you good at health and physical education she's even got that like slight blush on her face i hate this so much is that is that even a subject you can be good at please don't give respond to that kodoko there are no girls who dislike health and physical education that's my theory anyway i don't want to hear the the specifics of your theory girl stare <laughs> what the fuck kodoko she is pretty funny though what? She's staring at you. Truth is, I'm actually here to hunt you down. But I changed my mind. I'll let you escape. Really? What? This is so weird. This entire scene is so strange. I think Kodoko is just playing games with Komaru, but it's still really weird. It's not like my feelings about demons have changed any. I still hate them deeply. But I guess, but... You know, it could be a case by case in this case with Komaru. I still want to kill them all in the most painful, cruel way possible. I believe you. Like, for example, drowning them in a septic tank or putting a razor under their fingernails. I don't think the second thing would kill them, but it would be it would probably be worse than death. But that's not even enough. I hate them with full power. You could hear the vindictiveness coming out of that cute voice, and it's such a cool fucking juxtaposition but anywho despite my hatred the reason i let you escape was because you are super adorbs interesting interesting that kodoko finds komaru super adorbs i guess to be fair toko does too but she just doesn't want to admit it huh <laughs> well, that was such a good huh like dude komaru has no fucking clue what's going on right now i love adorable things I collect everything adorbs from faucets to toilet seats. So she so so Kotoko considers Komaru super adorbs. And then Kotoko goes with I love adorable things. I collect everything adorbs. It, are, are you trying to say you would also collect adorable people? I, I, is that what we're implying here? So, I'm going to let an adorable girl like you go. You just said you collect adorable things though. Hmm. Really? There is one catch. You're the only one allowed to leave. Four Eyes over there is not cute at all. Interesting. Honestly, Kodoko saying that makes me believe her a little more that she's actually being genuine right now. She's like, I'm going to kill everyone else. But I'll let you go. What? But shh. Keep it a secret, especially from the sage Nagisa. He's super strict with rules. I feel like... Honestly, your two friends that are left probably don't want to tell either of them. Nagisa says I can't even drink soda during meals. Fucking lame. It's not my fault the food is so tasteless. I mean, he could at least let me have a little. Mm hmm. I wonder what food you guys are having because the fact that you need soda to, to like wash down the meal, that, that kind of screams shitty meals, to be honest. Tells me to drink milk, even if I'm eating cereal. It's like drinking curry soup with your curry. That's kind of weird, to be honest. If I, if I was having cereal, I wouldn't have a drink with it, to be honest. Like if anything, if anything, maybe water after, but not during. Uh, um, yeah, what do you even say to any of this, Kamaru, honestly? Anyway, let's go. Go on, get out before those chumps notice. Chumps. You know who really liked to call people chumps? 
a certain fashionista. But, but I can't be the only one to go. I can't just abandon all the people here. Oh, something wrong? Is your red flower blooming? Why? Why is that a lot? God. <laughs> this chapter is gonna break me. Or maybe you just like locked rooms. Like, you're a murder mystery enthusiast? I mean... I guess. I do really like Ace Attorney, and I've really enjoyed Danganronpa as well, so I mean... And AI. So... And all of those games have a lot of similarities, so... Yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> I can't... Just leave Toko behind. Well, I can understand a little hesitation. Why don't you just leave the cell for now? This is so weird! Come on, just step on out. Girls are more adorable if they're a teensy bit selfish. That's actually a really interesting line. And now... Hiya! <laughs> it... What the fuck? They're like dentures. Jesus Christ, that knocked her out? This is a denture launcher. Wow, it really so is. how about it? Pretty sweet machine, right? It's something. I don't really get the correlation as to why you would have a denture launcher. I don't really get how that fits with your character at all. But it's something. It's pink. Um... Yeah, this makes sense though. I like I don't I don't know like Kotoko doing this whole bit like it yeah because even in this very conversation she said that she collects adorable things. So if she really thinks you're adorbs, maybe she doesn't want to kill you, but she definitely wants you in one form or fashion. The smooth shaft, the fresh pink What the color, fuck? The brutal yet hypnotizing shine. Are we sure we're both talking about a denture launcher? <laughs> it's so adorbs, I just can't stand it! If you say so, girl. Ah, by the way, my dad was a dentist. Ah, okay, okay. Thanks for just talking to the audience here, Kotoko, and explaining your fucking strange-ass weapon. And also, Papa was always cheating with his dental assistant. Not surprising. But I guess he had an inferiority complex, because he always role-played as a brain surgeon. So you heard all of it? Oh, man. Yes, a great daddy indeed. Neglecting his business and making me earn money instead. Jesus Christ. A perfect papa who I could kill over and over <laughs> and over and it still wouldn't have been enough. I bet. I mean, based on the scene that we saw in the last episode and... I mean... God, I got chills right now. That's crazy. The voice acting from Kotoko's fucking VA is crazy, too. What is this? I can't move. Okay, so she is still awake. I, I knew her eyes were open, but the way she was drooling, I was wondering if she was, like, knocked out. Ooh, your sleepy face is super adorbs. Everything's so adorbs with this one. I bet your face is cute even halfway through swimming a stroke. That is one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. Uh, however. Being adorbs isn't always a good thing. Cute girls go through terrible things. Jesus, every time Kotoko talks like that, it gives me chills. Holy fuck. I mean, the line doesn't hurt either. And if you're adorable too, you have to protect yourself. On your own. Holy shit, I'm getting hardcore chills right now. I mean, it's really fucked up, but to some extent, she's not wrong. If you can't, you have to take whatever they give you. Jesus Christ. I don't even know if I want to keep pressing X. Like, I'm really scared what she's going to start saying. It's a shitty rule, but I didn't make it. Adults did. Holy fuck. So be prepared for that life. Wow. This is wild. Toko. Aw.
That was crazy. Holy fuck. Was someone just talking about me? You fucking sense it? The fucking... What the fuck? Uh, oh, here it comes. Uh, here we go. It's time for a little genocide action. Master Biakia must have been talking about me. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was really cool, actually, the way they did that transition. I wonder what he's doing while he's calling my name. Jeez, Master is such a perv. God, nothing can beat the fucking Genocide Jack voice acting, though. Jesus Christ. I can't just stay put here. I gotta get out of here and help Master out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she just keeps going. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like Jill can easily break out of here. She's an absolute beast. Hey, Dekomaru! Let's go see Master now! If you are of use to me, I'll buy you ramen. I'll even add seaweed for you as a top. Hey, I'll go for some ramen. Now that's committing to a joke. <laughs> what the fuck? Strange, though. Her scent's still here. Did she perhaps run away on her own? What the fuck? Wait, what? Wait, what? They, Is they... that like a GPS for Dekomaru's wrist? A and and the other kids I have see. the have the this have the good for tailing her. Yeah, but the other kids have the stun gun no and way. you want me to chase after her, don't you? And the the but fucking why are you giving this splendid yeah. to an enemy like me? Yeah. Is it perhaps that the other me has some annoying plan hidden up her sleeve? Huh? No. Well, doesn't matter. Our goal is probably the same anyway. <laughs> I mean, unless... Oh, that that was cool. That was cool. The way she did the, the fan. Yeah, those kids are like, damn. I kind of like her. Um, What the fuck? There's so much to say about that, though. That was, like, really interesting. And, like, I'm, like, really curious. And what the fuck am I looking at? Do I even want to know? Probably not. But I see the bow and horns, so obviously this is Kotoko's doing. Which, I mean, obviously... I mean, that would have been obvious anyways, but what the fuck. But, before we get into whatever the fuck's about to happen next... Good God. Um, that was really interesting, because it is like one of the things is like... Something weird is going on, and I don't know what... And I haven't really gotten a read on it. Like, Toko's acted a little sus, but I don't really know. I can't really piece together why. And there's the, like I said, there's the weird thing that the kids keep giving us help. Like, like over the course of the game, we keep getting, like, bullets after, you know, Nagito game balanced us. And I'm, like, really curious what that all means. Because I do feel like there's going to be an explanation before the end of the game. Because that's just the way Danganronpa is. Yeah. Yep. Now then, let's begin with the motivation. Excuse me? The motivation? I don't like the fact that motivation's in yellow and is in quotations. P please no! Please stop! Nope! Not gonna happen! Switch on! What? 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 I mean, first you get the fucking panty shot. But. You're telling me. These weird ass hands are about to fucking. Like. Molest Kamaru? What is happening? I'm so scared to press X. Come on, come on, come on. Let me hear that adorable voice. I mean, this kind of does make sense for Kotoko's character, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't, I really didn't see this coming. 
I, th I thought we were gonna get like a lot more fucked up Kotoko backstory that was gonna go even deeper into just how sick and deranged her father and and like that whole situation was. This actually makes a lot of sense for Kotoko, but like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I... This episode keeps getting weirder and weirder. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Sorry to disturb you while you're, um, busy. It's time for a tutorial. Bro, I'm supposed to make jokes like this. The game is not supposed to actually... Ah. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm, like, at a loss right now. Like, I legitimately have no idea what the fuck to say. This is insane. This is so fucking silly. This is so fucking weird. Like, what the actual fuck is happening right now? This is fucking nuts. Like, what the fuck? You can fight away the... T like, the game is memeing now at this point. Like, this is, like, a, some sort of weird, like, hentai sex game, mini game. And now we're calling these weird hand things that are clearly not tentacles, tentacles, just for the memes at this point. Now we are literally, tr we, like, the troll, like, I can appreciate the fact that they're going this far with the troll, but I'm actually at a loss for the fact that we're uh, literally about to play a mini game where we literally have to prevent Komaru from being assaulted by these weird hand things being controlled by a kid. Like, there's so many, like, layers to how fucked up this is. And I don't even, like... This is wild. I... Uh... I don't even know what to say. This is just insane. Ten oh my god, goodness. So yeah, I mean, we know exactly where these hands are going to be going. Jesus Christ. Tentacles will also attack from outside the screen. Sure, sure, sure. Letting Komaru get groped increases the heart meter. You know what that represents, right? A part of me, out of morbid curiosity, is curious to see what happens, but I think I'm going to just not. But what the fuck? If it fills all the way, it's game over. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, l l let's just go with that. So enjoy yourself, but you know, keep that in mind. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, Konamaru is really cute and all that. And I'm sure there's definitely a lot of people into Komaru. But I'm just baffled that this is, like, a canon thing that's actually about to happen. Like, in a way, it doesn't surprise me. But I think it's just, like, the full context of what's happening. Like, I feel like if it, it like, obviously, you know, again, she's dead and all that. But, like, if Junko was doing this to someone, like, I don't think I'd be that weirded out. Like, it would be fucked up, but I don't think it would, like, break my brain. I think it's the fact that a fucking kid is doing this. That is, like, there's so many levels to this that are just, like, unbelievable. And, like, it makes sense for Kotoko's character, but I'm just at a loss. Like, I don't even know what to say. Also, I will say I do kind of like the design of the heart meter, though. Um, what the fuck? All right, let's get this over Time with. So how does this work? Uh, Please, no. Okay. Uh, 
okay. Oh. Oh my god, she's getting drenched. This is insane. No. No. Oh my god, that hand was right there. Jesus Christ, this is actually slightly more difficult than I thought. What the fuck? She's way too excited about this. Oh my god. I hate how into this Kotoko is. Like, like she went through this horrible shit and it like changed her. Holy shit. But it is, like, interesting, because, like, keeping the ratings down. Oh, my God. You're... Bro. I can't with this game. My, my, you're persistent. But we're just getting started. You're going to be slowly but surely motivated. Like, the fact that Kotoko is, like, into this is so wild. But it makes so much sense, right? Because... There is a very strong correlation between um, sexual abuse and sexual abusers. So it makes sense. But it's still wild to see this. Please, enough already. Oh, it's even worse, right? Because like. You know, she's having physical reactions to what's happening, but obviously she is um, right now pretty much the definition of uh, uh, of not consenting. So, you know, you have that like really fucked up uh, situation where she's having a physical reaction and and where I think this is going is Kotoko is going to use the physical reaction to justify her actions using the argument that that's what happened to her. So how is this different than what happened to her, right? So she's going to go down that direction. And the correct answer is both of those things were wrong. But she's using this terrible thing that happened to her to justify doing the same terrible thing to other people. But it's like one of those things where it's hard to dissuade her out of it because she is right about the fact that the thing that happened to her was terrible and this is her fucked up way of coping with it and it goes even a step further because it turns into like this weird creepy fetish for her so there's like so many like just horrible layers to this whole thing and that's where like i i will admit like i do think the storytelling is really interesting and really good but like i'm just i did just think it's wild that they went this far like at some level, I can respect it, but obviously, I could also fully understand why a lot of people, like, really <laughs> don't like this. Um, I would imagine, because I know this game is a little controversial, I could definitely see this chapter being a primary reason why. Even though I actually think the storytelling in this game has been tremendous. I actually think, and really just in general, a game about... Uh, about kids who are traumatized turning into awful people is is going to be controversial, I think, regardless. But I think especially the way they've handled it, I think they've really not pulled any punches, and I think this has been a chief example of that, for better and for worse. And it's, it's certainly something. I think my bigger thing, though, is with this happening in Chapter 3, I, I do wonder, like, can this get worse? I, I don't... I mean, like... I feel like this is such a like emotional extreme for a lot of people that have that played this game. So it's like no matter what we get up to with Nagisa and Monica, I don't know if it can emotionally compare to the trauma that's going on here. So like that does kind of make me both scared and intrigued as to what we're going to get up to in chapters four and five and six if there is a six. Because I'm still unsure if if it, this game's going to end at chapter 5, because there's five kids, or if there's going to be, like, a, you know, chapter 6 where we beat Nagito, or, you know, the remnants get involved, or any craziness like that. Ooh, you're so sexy! Yeah, they're not even, like, sugarcoating it. Like, this is very Danganronpa right now. They're just, like, being very upfront with, like, what they're going for here, which I also can appreciate. 
But, like, they're not trying to hide the fact that, like, Kotoko is a victim of abuse who's become an abuser herself. I think what, what, what really makes it wild is she's still so young and she's already in the abuser stage. I've heard women are the best just before they're ripe, but this is beyond my expectations. I'm not even gonna, I'm not, yeah, we're not, we're not commenting on that one. But when they rot, they become demons. I have to figure out the perfect timing. That is wild. And like the implication that she's gonna like keep testing this with a gazillion other fucking girls till she finds, oh my God. Oh my God, that's insane. Stop it. Why are you doing this? That's what I always asked. God, there it is. Many, many times. Yep, yep. I, I, I pretty much predicted that she was. This is going to be her justification, and it's, it's one of those things where a wrong doesn't justify another wrong, but it's also hard to dissuade her because her justification is legitimately something horrible that happened to her, and it's a shame that it happened to her. The answer was always because I'm cute. Jesus Christ. I'm not a bad girl. This is just payback for what happened to me. Yeah, there's the justification. If you think this is wrong, then what the adults did to me is wrong too, right? Yes. And if that's the way it is, there's nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately, and this is the really sad uh, situation here, there's nothing you can do to save Kotoko. The damage has been done. You know, you could be a nice person. You could try to help her in all these different ways but unfor like the this is kind of the tragic instance here is the trauma is 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 part of them the damage to Masaru has been done the damage to Jotaro has been done the damage to Kotoko has been done and presumably the damage to Nagisa and Monica um there's certainly a chance that Monica's the weight uh in, in a wheelchair because of traumatic instances with her parents, which would be insane if they, if they like did that intentionally. But, um, but I mean that, that, I guess that's the most likely explanation given the fact that she's in a wheelchair for some reason. And, uh, Nagisa, it's, it, it's still a bit unclear to me what his deal is, but, um, that's the unfortunate situation, right? Is like these kids are very much in the wrong, but that doesn't change the fact that they that they they got the way they did because of the wrongs committed to on them. So it's very sticky all around. And that was probably a terrible word to use in this context. What the fuck? We're not doing this again. Oh, put that lewd body of yours to work, and you'll never go hungry. Yeah, it's 2024. That that statement rings a lot more true than it did then. By the way, this is the opposite of child. What the so fuck? It's okay to put in a video game. No problem. What a line. I guess she's trying. I, I guess the joke is the child. Yeah, it's like the one getting assaulted is the is is uh, fucking. Oh, my God. I can't even think of her name right now. Komaru. Like, I'm so like I, I'm like so stunlocked right now. Like, I don't even know what the fuck to say. The, the fact that that's a line is wild. Wait, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Komaru can't even like. Well, like she's like, is what the fuck? It's wrong for a kid to be doing this, but it's wrong for adults to be doing this too, right? And there, there's that again. That justification I was talking about. Both are no good. If you're slapped on the right cheek, slap them on the left, as they say. That's the problem. Unfortunately, that doesn't do anything except perpetuate the cycle of violence, the cycle of hatred. But it's hard to persuade someone out of the cycle when they themselves have been a victim of the cycle. It takes the, the greatest strength and the greatest resolve and willpower to actually end the cycle and, and rise above your own um, hardships and your own um, and the horrible things that have happened to you. No! No! What the fuck? Okay, Jill. Jesus Christ. Nice. 10 out of 10. Huh? Is this GPS broken or what? It's going like 35 miles an hour. No! Why 
are we on? Are we? Is the Earth spinning away without me? Oh my God! Huh? No, it's because we were on a monorail, apparently. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, monorails are a first for me. <laughs> what the fuck? Totally pumped me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, girl. Okay, so we're about. Oh, okay, that's a really cool shot. Oh, and you got a good shot of her thigh too with the uh, the markings. That was a really cool shot. So now we're just gonna Where's fight through. So we're gonna fight through this train. We have nine minutes. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing any sparklies. There probably won't be any here, but. So we're gonna fight through this train. So, it's a robot versus serial killer, huh? Oh, Miss Toka, I wanna slice up some pretty boys. <laughs> GG's. Cash me out, easy money, let's go. Scare a child. It's been Dubs. Oh, ball monokuma. We haven't seen a ball monokuma in a little while. Easy money. Wait, oh, Jesus. There was... What the fuck, the ball? Oh yeah, the ball monokuma. I forgot they throw fucking, um... Fucking Kyoko's favorite ramen. Run! Hey, Deku oh, okay, Maru, a jump, Monokuma. I'm getting bored. Fair. I apologize, but I... I keep forgetting how to do, like, the special attacks with, um... It is really cool that we got the full... The full suite here. I keep forgetting how to do the special, um... The special attacks with, uh... Genocide Jill. I mean, you don't need to do them because you can just spam, you know, you can just spam the attacks and, and, and like, she's just so broken that it doesn't matter. And right now we have, like, an unlimited time limit on her, so it's, it's actually really easy. Alright. Is it time? Are we getting close to... Nope, doesn't look like it. Still, still on the search the for... Oh, okay, that's a special door. Oh, oh, I was about to say, is there anyone... Yeah, just gotta make sure we don't get blown up there just because it takes a few seconds for her to get up. What the fuck? Oh my god, are we gonna fight her, like, straight up? Like, she does have her denture launcher, but she's not gonna stand a chance against us. I mean, it is like that. Oh my God! Girls deserve punishment. Oh! That's a very. That's a very Junko thing to say. God, I love Jill so much. You're plenty ugly enough. Wow. You're so gross, sticking out your tongue like that. Not a dwarf at all. Well, no shit. I don't know what those things do, but. Oh, oh, it just like stalls us out. Okay. Dude, I can literally just cook her and just, yeah. Oh my god, we're shredding her clothes off. This is so stupid. I mean, that's fair. I mean, that's honestly true, but. I mean, this is literally, literally, we just keep pressing square, and I could just eat the, eat the. I'll just eat the dentures, and then just keep shredding her apart. What the fuck? Genocide Jill just like, eh, whatever. No! Pervert! Perverted to the extreme! Honestly, a fair response. She is perverted to the extreme. Like, that's, that's like, unironically true. 
Like, this isn't even a boss fight. This is literally... I, I also find it funny that in the background, Kamara is just getting... I mean, I'm actually 18, but... What? It's really <laughs> too much. <laughs> okay, that's a funny joke. I'll give him that. I actually thought that that was going to get worse. She's actually still, like, wearing a reasonable amount of clothes, so it's fine. Oh, my. <laughs> Shooting blanks, are we? What the fuck, Jill? Then again, you were never loaded in the first place. Damn. <laughs> That's a serial killer for you, I guess. How vulgar! Hey, don't make that face, or else you'll end up in a far more vulgar situation. Jesus, her voice acting so good. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? Why? How? I have so many questions. What the fuck? Uh. That literally made no sense. Whoa there. You better stay put. Oh my god, are they like on top of each other in a super sus situation? Please. Please. I love these two so much, so that would be funny as fuck. If you don't, my hand might slip. And then I go a snip, snip, snip. God, I love her so much. Oh, I he, she just freed her. Jeez. Now don't go getting captured by some little runt. Fair. I thought you wouldn't come. I mean, right after we had that fight. Interesting choice of words there, Komaro. Fight? What the hell are you talking about? I just want to save Master Byaku. <laughs> oh my god, that reaction. The music, too. Aw, that's so cute. <laughs> Toku, I was so scared. It's... <laughs> It's funny because they don't share um, memory, so, like, Jill's a little confused, but at the same time, like, they do share kind of, like, feeling and stuff, so I think she, like, probably understands better than she's letting on what's going on, even if she doesn't know the details. <laughs> what's this unexpected girl-on-girl -girl development? Let's fucking go, baby! I mean, like... Toko and Byakuya is kind of peak, but this is kind of peak, too, so I'm torn. Whoa there, lady! I ain't got that kind of taste! Get off me! Got her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Aw, poor Komaru. Okay, so they are kind of having their, their reconciliation in this chapter, which is really interesting. The funny thing is, I don't think this is the end of the chapter because it seems like uh, Kotoko got away. And we haven't... I, I don't know if that was supposed to be the boss battle or if we're still doing, like, the robot thing. I... I tried to leave you. I tried to run away. Mm. And I said such horrible things, like, that you don't have any friends. Aw. This is such a funny animation, by the way. Like, really fucking silly. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry, Toko. I have no right to accept that apology. Aw. Huh? You seriously are stupid. Why the hell are you trusting a serial killer? Yeah, there is that. What, what happened? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh my god. Satisfaction! What the fuck, Jill? Oh. Good to see you again, Toko. Yeah, a lot just happened since your sneeze. What, what, what is going on here? It worked out. Um, let's just go for now. It would be a hassle to explain. Y yeah, okay. I don't really get it, but I definitely don't want to be down here anymore. Yeah, this is a sussy, uh, train car, I suppose. Komaru Naegi? More like Komaru Naegi. <laughs> she did not just say that. Come on, that wasn't even clever. She, this is wild. This is like, it's all fucked up. I guess because it crashed, but like this angle is crazy. I can't believe she just said that, by the way. Um, 
So I guess we just go down here for the sparkly. Yeah, we can. Memoirs of Kotoko Utsugi. I think we get the memoirs right before the boss fight, which makes me think that the mem the boss fight is still coming. Beware of wearing bear undies. <laughs> okay. Lame, so lame. Why are the bodies of demons not adorbs at all? Like their bodies are bigger for no reason. They're not even filled with adorbs things inside. It's like an egg that has nothing inside. Empty dumpty. I should kill them all just for that. Speaking of eggs, there are two ways to write egg in Japanese, but you can use the words in different ways. The first egg means shelter from where life is born. The other egg means a cooking ingredient. Woohoo! Isn't trivia just so adorbs? Yeah. Trivia is so adorbs, unlike you. I mean, you actually are kind of adorable, but you're also Kotoko Tsugi, so there's that. What the fuck? We literally crashed into the arena? Oh my god, okay. Well, I guess it's boss time. Thanks to you, I did manage to get myself a new outfit, but you wrecked the moving fighter castle. What, Kotoko's moving castle, huh? I feel furiously angry. You have seriously made me mad. You notice how she's saying that in such a fake way? Your face doesn't really match up with what you're saying. Or the tone of voice. This is acting, after all. Inside my heart, I can't help but feel unlucky. You were unlucky, Kotoko. It's really unfortunate. It's really sad. Really fucked up. Also, I'm noticing there's a ton of water, so the paralyzed bullet is going to be clutch in this battle for sure. Speaking of unlucky, you really should have let me motivate you a little more. Yeah, I, I think when Komaru wants to be motivated, it's going to be with um, someone her own age and someone who's a little more consensual. Just a hunch. You could have felt so good. Your mind would have been blown. You'd become so twisted. I guess, unfortunately, you would know from experience. Jesus Christ, this is so fucked up. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Oh? You're going to abandon the responsibility of being adorbs? That's not fair! That's a wild quote. Being adorbs means being an object of jealousy, being called ugly bitch, or told to die. That is a wilder quote. If that doesn't happen, being adorbs just isn't worth it. God, she really is so twisted. It's kind of crazy. Like, like, obviously, like, you know, I think as a society and just generally, like, as humans, we tend to find this particular type of uh, abuse a a a extra fucked up, and rightfully so. But even still, like, I'm, s like, as, I mean, Masaru, I feel like, was really sad because I don't even think he was that twisted, he but he, you know, I mean, he, he you know, he, he did these horrible things, but, like, I don't even think he was that far gone, to be honest, which which was kind of his tragedy. Jotaro was pretty far gone, right? And 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 to see that entire thing built um, the way that it was was tragic. But, I mean, Kotoko... I mean, I, I thought it would be hard to be as far gone as Jotaro was, but Kotoko really is like that. And what's scary about Kotaro, Kotoko is, unlike Jotaro, you know, Kotoko is is quite intelligent and quite kind of um you're kind of operating above her age in a lot of ways i mean unfortunately in some ways but which i think makes it even more terrifying to see just how far down the rabbit hole she's gone which i think makes me really scared for nagisa and monica because even though nagisa seems like he's the most reasonable of the bunch that could easily shift the other direction, and obviously Monica is just terrifying. I think what you're describing is called undue resentment. And another thing, Omaru is not as cute as you say she is. She's like slightly above average. I mean, we could work with that. I'll take that. Yeah, exactly. Undue resentment? No, 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 this is the work of demons. 
Unfortunately, I actually, in this particular case, kind of agree with Kotoko. All I wanted was to be the same as everyone else. A normal kid who didn't stand out. Fair enough. But she used me to get her dream, even if it meant going to market with me. Oh my god. Going to market with me is wild. Well, the guys who wanted that are to blame too. Yeah. Business with a mother and daughter set? What the fuck? Adults be. God, that's so... That really is insane. Oh, my mistake. I meant demons, not adults. I would make that distinction, but not for the reason you do. You make that distinction because you think all adults are demons. I make that distinction because I'd like to think that most adults aren't. But there's definitely some that absolutely are. And you've had your uh, experiences with a fair few of them. Seriously, I'm so ashamed of myself for actually listening to what those ugly demons used to say. Mm. But everything's changed now. Mm -hmm. I bet. As someone who knows what makes adults happy, I also know the things they don't want. God, that's so fucked up. Using what I've learned, I can take down the demons and make them suffer as much as I did. Yeah, I mean, that's what you've been doing. Not all adults are like that. There are good people who... Then why didn't anyone save me? There you go. I mean, that, that sums it up right there. The world's a cruel place and things don't always... There are good people, righteous people. In fact, a lot of people are like that. Um, but unfortunately, the world's not all sunshines and rainbows. Bad things happen, and oftentimes, bad people get away with bad things. And Yeah, God, her face is crazy right there. If the world is so good, mm -hmm. why didn't and there's no, there's no answer to that question. There's no counterpoint I can give. And that's part of what makes this story, you know, hit the way it does. Well, doesn't matter. What I said just now, that wasn't how I really feel. That was acting. Yeah, you tell yourself that, Kotoko. Just leave it to the former child acting genius. And a perfect performance is easy as cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, I've been saved by Big Sis Junko anyway. And there's the Big Sis Junko thing. That name again? I'm sick of hearing that name. I disagree, Toko. Oh? Does Miss Ugly Glasses over there happen to know Big Sis Junko? I wouldn't elaborate, Toko, but yes. <gasps> Miss Ugly Glasses? Nice. You guys have no idea. You don't know how horrifying that woman really is. Here's the funny part, right? We still don't know the specifics between Junko and the Warriors of Hope. But I have a feeling they do know how horrifying Junko is. And they don't care because Junko showed them kindness and showed them a way to cope with their issues. And obviously it was the worst way possible. But based on what we've heard from them and even... I mean, even just some of the little... Because in this chapter, we even got the whole, like, they were on their adventure, and then they saved the princess, Junko, and all that. I wouldn't be surprised if they fully understand how terrible Junko is and don't care. Like, I almost feel like this is a moment where Toko might be underestimating the intelligence of the Warriors of Hope. Just because they, you know... We're saved by her, and and they they see her as a as a savior, as a princess, as a goddess, whatever, right? The despair goddess herself. That doesn't mean that they aren't aware of the fact that Junko was using them or any of that. Like both can be true. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Junko was like very open about that fact as well. And that might even have been part of the reason why they, um appreciate her because she was real with her with them at least from their perspective she was real with them in a way that their parents and other adults never were 
because adults always treated them like kids, whereas Junko probably treated them as equals, or or at least was open to the fact that she saw them as lesser, but still cared about them. However she framed it, she was likely more real to them than adults ever were, and that's a big reason why they became the way they did, alongside of what the adults did to them. I can't wait. I hope, I hope we get backstory, specific backstory on, like, Junko and the Warriors of Hope. I really hope that comes up in this game, because I really want to see it. One, because I'm a Junko simp, but two, I'm actually really interested in how the, all that went down. You were fooled. I don't know how she convinced you that she was some sweet, gentle girl, but... I don't think... Oh, I don't think... She convinced. I don't think she convinced them of that. Like, I'm I'm kind of under the assumption that she was actually more genuine with them than Toko thinks. G gentle? Fuck. You said the word, Toko. That, that was a bad idea. Gentle! God, this is so hard to watch. <laughs> yep. When they're gentle, I, I get all flinchy. No, I don't want gentle. I don't. Please stop. I'm still like scarred from what we saw in the last fucking video with Monica and Kotoko. That shit was crazy. to her this doesn't look like acting no i don't want gentle i don't want any more gentle i don't even know what to say all right let's get this boss battle over with i i said i god and and when they when they when they start their boss battle fights they're always so scared and don't ever say gentle. and so vulnerable, and it, it, it makes you feel I even worse you, for them. I beg you, no more anything but gentle. God, uh, like the desperation so obvious in their face and their voice. Interesting. Boom, fighter robot, Highlander the Great. Okay. <laughs> Don't say you'll be gentle. <laughs> Please, just hurt me instead. Oh! <laughs> oh! Gentle. Please be gentle with me. <laughs> Please kill me instead! Oh my god. Please kill me instead. I uh, unbelievable. With the demon hunting prize, I don't even know what I'm to say. Stork so Monica and I can have a kid. Wow. I can't lose. I won't lose. Everyone I don't even know what, a weak spot somewhere, what? right? Let's try to find it. Right when the axe connects with the ground seems like a good time to strike. Mega attack! <laughs> Mega attack! I'm wasting all my shit. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing here, like... Mega piston. Maybe the logo in the middle? No, that's not it. Special attack. Oh, am I just supposed to... Oh, I'm probably just supposed to fucking... Oh, 
Oh, I get it. I'm supposed to paralyze a Monokuma. Oh, and I killed myself like a fucking idiot. Yeah. And that's literally why there's the fucking... That's literally why there's the fucking islands. With the demon hunting prize money, yeah, I'm, I'm totally supposed to... Monica and I can have a kid. That's a really fun line, lose. by the way. I won't lose. That robot has to have a weak spot somewhere, right? Let's try to find it. Here's the weak spot. Hiding under the armor. Right. I wasn't even close enough. You wanna be gentle with me? I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Right when the axe connects with the ground seems like a good time to strike. Interesting. An idiot. Special attack! Mega Splash! Check out the website for more info. Turning, turning, a swiftly tilting world. Yeah, yeah. Now I get it. You paralyze and then you. Yes, kids can't win against adults. Yeah, it cut off the, the, the line. It is interesting, too, that all these robots have very specific weak points. I wonder if they're symbolic of each of the kids they represent. Yep, and there you see her true face of fear. There's the Monokuma kid. Oh shit, we're actually saving her. Good for you, Toko. Big memes. Oh, I really like that shot of uh, Komaru. Pervert, this is borderline indecent. 
Yeah, you can say whatever you want, girl. We're trying to save you right now, I think. Shut up! This time around, I am definitely going to get you to talk. Where is Master Byakia? Fair enough. What are you doing to that child? Oh shit, Nagisa? Okay. How mature of you. No, I guess it is rather demonic in a way. Oh, the plot thickens. We just ha just straight up Nagisa just shows up right in front of us. That's insane. Ganging up and abusing a child. It's like a special skill all you adults have. And it would make sense that that's how Nagisa perceives this. N Nagisa. What? Abuse? You guys are the ones who started all this. All we want is a peaceful paradise where children can live without fear. Okay. Don't make me laugh. You've been using those Monokumas this whole time to murder adults. My whole thing is I don't know if you and Monica are on the same page there, Nagisa. She's right. If all you wanted was a peaceful paradise, you shouldn't have done it like this. Now to counteract that, how else would it have happened? How else would kids, like, in their defense? There is no other choice. We must yeah. kill them. If we allow them to live, our paradise will be undone. I mean, that's to be in their defense. That is literally what Haiji and the others are trying to do. And in a way, kind of what you two are trying to do as well. And if that happens, we will be forced to endure our pain once more. Nothing will change. We can never be at peace until we have wiped out every single one of them. That's so wild to think about, though. So we have to kill the demons to protect our world. That sounds like something from a damn video game. Have you lost your mind, kid? It does sound like something from a damn video game, Toko. Yeah, you're probably right. We've all gone mad. Exactly. And I don't think, yeah, I think they all know that. Masaru, Jotaro, mm -hmm. Kotoko, Monica. We're probably all insane. Broken. What's ironic about that is, like, Nagisa seems the least so, which is interesting because that's probably just his personality. He, he's just very smart and a very reasonable person, but he's also definitely broken in his own way, and obviously he is if he's taking part in all this. But whose fault is that? The adults are the ones who broke us. Yeah, that's basically what, what um what uh kotoko was saying in her own in regards to her own specific traumas i also like how um the uh, I, I like how the animation for nagisa and the sprite for nagisa match right now that's pretty cool and also just weird to see kotoko down there in the water nagisa you want to hear the truth we're scared. Yep. We're all terrified of the adults. Of course, and you have every right to be. Hearing their footsteps. Sensing their presence. Yep. We can't help but feel scared. Completely terrified. As long as adults exist, we cannot rest. We cannot live in peace. At this point, the damage is irreversible. I agree that the damage is irreversible. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't still live a a fulfilling life and, and, and overcome your trauma to some extent, but the damage can never be undone at the same time. It is something that, unfortunately, you'll have to live with forever. I... I figured that something like that was behind all of this. And I do pity you. But no matter how pitiful you are... It doesn't mean that you can hurt others. I agree with Komaru, but it's... Like I said, it's a complicated question, and, and there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it, which is why, like I said, it's, it's a big reason why this game's story is as interesting as it is. To just treat them how they treated you? That's just going to make everyone equally miserable. So you're saying we should just take it? You're saying we should abandon all hope? Huh. <laughs> That's the ironic thing, right? Because they're the warriors of hope. I mean, it's literally in their name. Junko gave them hope. And obviously, she that, that is kind of a thing that Junko has done multiple times in the story, give people hope. 
Now, of course, it's all done for a cert a very specific end game, a very specific end result, but... Hope? Yep. No, it's fine. Let's end this already. Oh? I want you to leave this town. Oh? Huh? Oh! 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 There it is! Do, do, do. That's the first time this played in the game, right? Is this like a Danganronpa 2 moment where they save it, like, until, like, halfway through the game to play it? I don't think this is played. This is the, this is the big one. This is the, the big reveal. This is New World Order. Oh, I love this song so much. This is probably my favorite theme in the entire series. I mean, obviously, the main theme of Danganronpa is goaded, but I love this song so much. It's that little piano coming in. You guys know I'm a simp for a piano. You want to run away, right? You want to escape the city, right? Yep. Then I will let you leave. Satisfied. Interesting, because Nagisa's trying to protect his interests, because you'd have Nagisa, Monica, potentially Kotoko still... Um, still there to run the city and achieve paradise because at this point, Toko and Komaru are interlopers that are interfering in their goals. So it makes sense. It's like, hey, you guys can leave. You guys can survive. You can, you know, go on outside this, outside of Toa City and live your lives and, and, and try and find meaning in them. And you leave us to find meaning in ours here, right? So it's kind of like he's seeing it as a win-win because that's what Komaru's wanted to do the whole time is leave. So it makes a lot of sense. This is really interesting. Nagisa, are you sure? It's my decision. As leader. Even if it's in name only, Monica did name him the leader. But what about Monica? Yeah, but even... That's the thing. Kotoko and Nagisa are even both smart enough to understand that Monica... You know, I mean, they all admitted it. But what Monica says goes kind of deal. I'll persuade her. Are you sure about that, kid? <laughs> Hold on. Are you seriously saying you're just gonna let her go? And I think he's being 100% genuine because it makes sense. He is trying to protect his interests by taking you two off the board because you two are pretty much the only reason why their plan is starting to fall apart. Until you two arrived, yeah, exactly. the revolution was progressing smoothly. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Uh, it's, a, it's a very logical move to make. I don't know how Monica will feel about it, his logic, but it's a very logical move to make. I don't want you to interfere any longer. Uh-huh. So please, just get out of here. Stay away from us, please. And then there's the whole, like, fear of the adults. That's also motivating this. Uh, that's a picture of Junko. And that is a some sort of magic circle. I, I love how demonic it looks. There's a lot going on in that circle. I, in the middle, I, I think we've seen that logo before. Is that like Hope's Peak related? I feel like we've seen that logo in the series. But that that's wild. All right, all done. That must have took a long time for you to fucking make, girl. Yay, Monica's very own special made magic circle. I'm terrified. Like, I don't think it's actually going to do anything, but you never know. But also, yeah, putting Junko's face in the middle is concerning, to say the least. <laughs> oh, you're awfully chipper. Yeah, she is. Well, of course. Everything is going swimmingly. Yeah, it's almost like you planned this out to go basically exactly how, how it's gone, which is terrifying. Spinny, spin, spin. The world is spinning, and Monica's at the center. <laughs> Ego. Everything is all thanks to my wonderful allies, playing their part and doing their best. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like time's winding down. Just a little bit longer, and we'll have a brand new successor on our hands. So th this is all part of some some stupid ploy to, to literally make Monica the next Junko, then. You know, it's really interesting, because... If... The events of this game... If Monica doesn't either die or is, like, defeated in some manner where she's out of the equation moving forward, I do wonder if Monica has a serious role in, in the Danganronpa 3 anime. 
It's gonna be really interesting to see how this game ends. <laughs> a second generation uh -huh. Junko and Ashima, huh? Well, things are getting pretty interesting around here. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so curious who Kurokuma is, because I don't think Kurokuma. I mean, I mean, maybe Kurokuma is just like an AI like Shirokuma, but part of me thinks Kurokuma is being controlled by someone the same way like Monokuma, the OG Monokuma was. Um, so, like, yeah, I'm so curious. Holy shit, that was a crazy chapter. Yeah, we take that A, even though we didn't get all the Monokumans. I wonder if you can get an S. And I did technically die once, too. What am I going to get here? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh my As God. expected of the woman I entrusted with my life. It was not wrong of me to believe in you. I'm the woman who you entrusted with your life? Oh, thank you, Byakuya. That means so much to me. Oh, I'd kill for Byakuya to say that to me. <laughs> Why the surprised expression? You idiot. Uh -huh. You're the only one I trust. Don't you know that by now? <sighs> oh, that's so sweet. That's amazing. Oh, I got a skill, re-raise. Nice. Oh, we'll take those 500 coins too, that's good shit. Cute girls battlefield end to be fucking continued. Holy shit. You merely broke my life, that's, that's something. Holy shit. I don't think I have a lot to say here. Um, this was insane. This was... This is probably going to be the most uncomfortable I ever am playing this game. It's wild because... In not that long a period of time, I feel like these themes have like basically never come up in any of my series... And then I swear, in like a sh relatively short period of time, I want to say it's come up in like three different series. Um, in like a really short period of time. It's actually wild. There's two for sure. I feel like I'm forgetting one. And maybe I just blacked it out. There's two that jump to my mind. Uh, this one and another series. Obviously, I'm not going to say specifics because I don't want to, you know, spoil anything. But all of a sudden, I feel like this theme has come up a lot. And it's obviously a really heavy theme. Yeah, it's hard for a lot of people to watch, so if you, like, skip to the end, or, you know, we're jumping through, or you didn't, you know, you didn't watch this episode at all, like, I totally get it. Um, like, I think this was, like, really interesting, and I think there was a lot of stuff here that was, like, really, really cool, and, and like, like I, I think there was a lot of interesting nuance, but obviously Danganronpa has a very specific kind of flavor to it, and I think because it really... It was unabashedly Danganronpa, even on this topic. I could definitely see how it could have rubbed some people the wrong way. Or just in general, it might not even rub you the wrong way. It might just be like, I don't want to deal with this because either it hits too close to home or it's just something that generally, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't want to see this in their media. And I think I'm personally of the opinion that stuff like this being portrayed in media is... Uh, generally a good thing. Um, I, I, I think there, there are the moments where, you know, telling a story about this, um, has an overall, uh, net positive on, on people, because I do think it's important to tell stories about all manner of trauma. Uh, and I think overcoming it and, and also showing just how horrible it is, is important because I think a lot of people, you know, I, I, I'd like to think I'm a good example. I uh, have never gone through stuff like this. And I think it's important to really get through to people just how bad these things are. And I think this is one of the best ways because, you know, you it, I'd rather see it in my fiction than in reality. And unfortunately, it's a huge part of reality. Now, I understand the flip side of that 
that, you know, fiction is an escape and there's people that don't want to get into these type of things. I think where I kind of lead with that is I think there's different types of fiction. I think if you want an escape, there's a lot of, you know, more, I think, general stuff. Um, and there, there, there's certain series that, you know, you know are going to get into really messed up themes. And it's just it's just kind of par for the course or what have you. Um, where it's just the type of content that you consume in fiction. Um, I personally don't have an issue with the series getting into this type of stuff. But I totally get people not wanting to consume it. And I think that's fair, right? Um, so yeah, if you didn't watch this episode or just skip to the end or anything like that, but you're listening to this for whatever reason, um, I totally get it. And I'm happy to see you next time when we get presumably into Nagisa stuff. I mean, even the way chapter three ended, we're literally like in a conversation with Nagisa and it's interesting because Kotoko is also there. So there's like a lot of interesting stuff going on and I'm like really curious to see how all of that plays out. So um, I can't wait to see it. I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering if chapter four might be a bit shorter because we're just starting the chapter with Nagisa and presumably by the end of the chapter, we're going to fight Nagisa. So how that whole situation develops is going to be really interesting. And I'm actually really excited because it feels like we're in a much different status quo heading into chapter four because Kotoko didn't get snatched up like Jotaro or Masaru. So possibly she might be with us as well. Um, and then Nagisa is with us. Um, you know, they're both with us to start. So like, I'm just really curious what that's going to be like. It, it kind of reminded me a lot of the end of the last chapter where we got, you know, we got Makoto and then we, you know, started chapter three with the Makoto conversation. Now we get this big reveal that Nagi says presumably going to let us go and we'll continue that conversation at the beginning of chapter four. So that's really exciting. And then, you know, we learn that Monica and Kurokuma are up to cooking up seemingly her as the second Junko, which makes sense. I mean, we've already been getting those vibes. I mean, it's not necessarily that she's even worse. It's that we're actually kind of getting to see the type of manipulations that we've heard about from Junko actually in action with Monica, which is crazy and something that um, is really making me both love and hate Monica in all the best ways. She is a wild villain and, um, the game's been great. Uh, we're at, we're probably at least halfway through um, because you assume, I mean, prologue plus the three, first three chapters. I mean, and this game almost certainly either has five or six chapters because you could, you could just say chapter four for Nagisa, chapter five for Monica, but we also know that both Danganronpa 1 and Danganronpa 2 were six chapters and a prologue. So... And maybe this, maybe this bucks tradition and goes with five or maybe maybe the story structure is going to have a switch up near the end. And like I said, we, we could, there's Nagito is cooking something, even though he seems to be rooting for us. There's a lot to take in and dive into. And I, I can't wait to see it all unfold, but uh, this was the crazy Kotoko stuff that I was worried about pretty much since the beginning of the game. When we already, when early on we were getting hints that Kotoko was going to be like this and, she was, and it was wild, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I think a lot. Of, there was a lot of really good stuff in here, but it was also very fucking hard to uh, stomach for sure. And I definitely am also excited to move on into the rest of the game. So that's pretty much, I think, where I stand on that overall. And I'm very excited for chapter four, and I hope all of you are excited for chapter four. Um, I think we did this in two episodes, if I'm not mistaken, and I think I'll try to keep that pace. So hopefully there will be like either four or six more episodes or maybe even three or five, depending on if the last chapter trends on the shorter side, because. um, Well, no, I, I guess that's comparable, but not really. I don't know. I would I would I would assume that there'll be six at the max more episodes of this, but but uh if there's only five chapters, then hopefully four more episodes will do it. I guess we'll have to see. But um, yeah, I uh, I'm really excited to see uh, that the continuation of that conversation between Nagisa, Toko, Komaru, and maybe even Kotoko if she gets involved in it.
it should be really interesting. But yeah, I'm um I'm kind of like I'm I'm feeling okay, but I'm kind of just like feeling like a tiny bit sick. I think just I just in the fact that like I don't you know. I, I just don't feel like talking anymore, so I'm going to get out of here. So, um, if you want to support the channel, Patreon's down below the description. There's a Discord server if you want to check that out. If you want to get in touch with me, you can message me over there. All that fun stuff. But uh, without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. Flaming Shark signing out. Hope you all have a wonderful, fantastical day. And I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.